So we have the SQA specimen question paper with answers book and it also has three model practice papers with answers for National 5 Maths. So this is question 10 up to 13 only. Question 1 to 9 were covered in a previous video. So number 10 basically talks about a rhombus. The angle there is 110. Each side is 40 because a rhombus has four equal sides. We need to find the area. Uh, so I've split across the middle. When in hindsight it's splitting straight up and down would probably save a little bit of work. But having a look here, each angle there will be 55 because we have symmetry in the rhombus. So we're splitting across the middle. Each angle will be half of 110. So 55 and 55. Each side's 40. The bottom side isn't 40 because that's not one of the sides of the rhombus. So I have an angle of 70 at the top, 50, 50, 58, bleh, 55 at 55 is 110. Subtract that from 180, we get 70. So I can use area equals a half AB sin C. So basically when we're using that formula, we have an angle. At the top here we have 70. And the two sides that kind of meet at that angle. So that'll be little a and little b in this case. So substituting the values for 40 and 40 for a and b and 70 degrees for angle c. And just press the buttons on the calculator, 751.754. Quick reminder, that is only the top half of the rhombus, so we'll need to double that. So it'll come out as 1503.5 1, centimeters squared. To one decimal place. A quick note there, don't round halfway through the question, only ever round at the end of the question. Question number 11 starts off asking, giving us f of x equals 3 sin x, and then asks us to find f of 270. So if it says f of 270, it's basically saying replace any x with 270. So 3 sin x becomes 3 sin 270. It's a calculator paper, just type that into the calculator, that'll give us negative 3. Part B, slightly trickier, says f of t equals 0 0.6. So what does f of t mean? Well, f of x equals sin x, so f of t, sorry, f of x equals 3 sin x, so f of t will be 3 sin t. And it's telling us that that equals 0 0.6. So it's basically a sin question, a, a trig equations question. We're going to divide through by 3, which will come to 0 0.2. So as we're looking between 0 and 360 degrees, we're going to have two solutions to that. So I find sin to the negative 1 of 0 0.2, which comes out as 11.5 degrees. I then use my ASTC diagram. So as is a positive sin question, sin is positive 0 0.2, I take the A and the S quadrant. So my two angles will be the angle I have here, 11.5, or also 180 subtract 11.5. So that'll be 11.5 and 168.5. On to number 12. So number 12, reasonably common type of question. You've basically got a circle with a chord in it. There's symmetry, and there's many lines of symmetry in a circle, but with a chord, it'll just be one line of symmetry. It talks about the radius. So if we use line of symmetry, we can make a right angle triangle, as I've done here. And we can just apply Pythagoras. So the radius is 1.9, the width of the surface of the oil in the question is 2.2, but because I'm using my line of symmetry down the middle, I'm, I've only got half of that, so that'll be 1.1. So apply Pythagoras' theorem, x squared plus 1.1 squared equals 1.9 squared. Uh, subtract 1.1 squared from both sides, evaluate that on the calculator, comes out as 2.4. 
Remember that's x squared, not x. So square root to get x is 1.55 meters to the nearest centimeter. Now that is what that was not asked for in the question. The question actually asked for the depth of the oil. So going from the center of the circle straight down will be the radius. So it'll be 1.9 meters from the center to the bottom. If we subtract x that we've just worked out, 1.55 will be left with the depth of the oil, which will be 0 0.35 meters. Question number 13. There's two triangles and they are mathematically similar. The scale factor is 3. So we're given two sides, we're given a small side, well, a two triangles, sorry, a small triangle and a large triangle. The large triangle is three times the size of the small triangle. And part A randomly gives, show that x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So looking at that, you might be thinking, what on earth am I going to do here? So it said that the triangles are similar. It's given us the length of some of the sides. It's got some x's, so I'm going to compare the sides with x's in. And the small triangle is a third of the size of the large triangle. So the length of the base of the large triangle is x squared plus 5. The length of the small triangle would have to multiply by 3 to make that, because it's a third of the size. So 3 times the wee triangle will make the large triangle. So in terms of the length of the base, 3 times 2x will be x squared plus 5. So 6x equals x squared plus 5. Now that's looking quite similar to what we're trying to show. Subtract 6x from both sides. So 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. So x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. There we go. And part B, given that QR is the shortest side of triangle PQR, find the value of x. So basically we have this from part A, x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. If I solve that, I will get two values for x. So factorize first, then solve. So either x minus 5 is 0 or x minus 1 is 0. If x minus 5 is 0, x will equal 5. If x minus 1 is 0, x will equal 1. Come back to the question. Given that QR is the shortest side of triangle PQR, find the value of x. So the shortest side is 6. So if I pick the value that x equals 1, and I double that, because the length of PR is 2x, 2 times 1 is only 2, but said in the question the shortest side is 6. So a value of x equals 1 cannot work, because 6 is not shorter than 2. So I need to take the value of 5. So I've written down x equals 5, bracket if x equals 1, PR would be 2 times 1, which is 2, but QR is 6, which is the shortest side. So I'm only taking the value x equals 5. Okay, and that is the end of the model paper 1 calculator paper.